parents had realized that they were leading people out of their ghetto. And one of the stories my dad told me is that they heard that they had taken 5,000 of the Jewish people in the town. They had all the uh, Jewish men from 16 to 60 report in the, uh, in the marketplace, and they picked out 220 men, all the teachers and medical staff, the business people, and my father was one of them. And they took him out uh, about a mile and a half from our house, and they shot every one of them. The shots, we could hear it from a distance, you know? And we figured it out. We were talking to each other. This is where the massacre is going on. And they told us to go back to the ghetto. I found my grandmother. When we came home, we find her in a pool of blood, lying in bed shot. And then they said, they said we will not go where the Germans want to send us, but we will, we're going to flee into the woods. So we decided that we are going to organize ourselves and leave for the forest and fight against the Nazis and take revenge for our loved ones. Approximately 30,000 Jews escaped the German ghettos and camps during World War II, forming or joining organized armed resistance groups. They were known as Jewish partisans. Jewish partisans saved thousands of lives while sabotaging German trains and convoys. Partisans were active in 10 countries throughout Europe, helping contribute to the end of World War II. Though most of them served in non-Jewish units, thousands served in all Jewish partisan groups, including the Bielski Brigade, the Avengers, and the Grinspan unit. I was 14 when I joined the partisans. And uh, I would say the brigade must have at least around 1,000 members. They're not soldiers. They weren't soldiers. My wife wasn't a soldier. She was 14 years old. I was 70 years old. We came to the woods. We heard about the German army. They came and the, the, the bullets, I could hear it right beside me. And, you know, and I wasn't afraid at all. And they had decided that rather than be led to slaughter, that they were gonna go out fighting. And if they got killed, they got killed. I mean, they made a point of trying to save as many people as possible. They weren't only looking after their own lives. After the war, Jewish partisans immigrated to countries all over the world, starting families and businesses, and becoming involved in their communities. In 2011, over 55 former Jewish partisans came together in New York City for a special dinner in their honor. Some of them have not seen or spoken to each other in over 65 years. I'm very excited to see my people getting together and just refresh my memories from that time. I haven't seen Leon in 65 years. We went to the same school and I remember his family. I knew his brother. He has no idea whatsoever that I'm coming to this dinner and I don't even know if he's gonna recognize me. Check uh, Zelwin. Zelwin, Z-E-L-W-I-N. I'm hoping that I can find somebody that will know my parents, somebody that's close to 90 or thereabouts, or that was around the same age as my parents would be if they were alive today, that would remember them. So that's what I'm hoping to find this weekend. My name is Romy Cole. This one. There you go. Okay. Are you coming to the event tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. During the war, I think I just said it's not right and I'm going to fight it as much as I could. But to run and be scared and run, that's not the way of life. This is my mom. Yeah. 
You have and me, do you have one for me too? No, just the part. Just the part? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 In the forest, we not only fought a physical battle, but we also fought a spiritual battle. As we were sitting around the fire, singing songs together, supporting each other, and dreaming about a better future and a better tomorrow. Fra Frank Blachman oh. sounds very familiar. Yeah, no. Poland. Yeah. Do you know me? No. <laughs> Now I know you. Blachmann, I know When we acquired firearms, we acquired also power. You don't have to know how to speak, nice, or so on. When you armed, you got everything. But we did not abuse our power. This was the greatest thing what we did, and I'm happy about it. Where do you live now? Fifth Avenue. Oh, in New York. Mira, I saw Mira the last time when we went out from the woods. This was the last time. And she says, yes. So give Mira, look how wonderful to see you again after 50, 60 years. I'm here for a reason to find people I can connect with. And I've been very fortunate in the fact that I've been able to connect with. I met a couple people that met knew my parents. So right now, everything's been great. I think my mother would be very emotional. I think my dad would be real happy to know that his whole family's basically taking the interest that we have in coming here and carrying on his legacy. Hi, how are you? So we're gonna stand like this. No, this way. We're gonna have you turn around. We were in Partizan to get 120 miles. It took us two days in the walk. We never complained. Now, if I walk 10 miles, I'm going <laughs> We have to wait just a moment. So I'm in the right place. You're in the perfect place. Just relax a little bit. Yeah, there you go. And I was a radio operator. And I Behind enemy lines. Transmitted news from the partisans to Moscow and get news from Moscow to partisans. We tried to avoid the, the fight because we didn't look for fight. Our task was to blow up the railroads and the highways to cut down the supplies to the German army. You are from where? where? No, Nevada. Nevada. I used to come in Nevada when I was, but that's size. I came to see me. <laughs> I met people here that I don't even remember. It was one lady here, and she tried to refresh my memory. It took a while before I caught on to it. No, I came to see my Bob and on, on, when school was over, you know, she had a meal. Uh -huh. When I walked over and I, I saw Leon, uh, uh, my heart started beating like, uh, you know. You have to realize that 65 years is not 65 days. It's something that I never thought that in my lifetime I will see Leon again. Label. How are you? You recognize me? No. Don't look at the name. <laughs> Label it. Yeah. Oh, Avomeya. Avomeya, sure. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we hugged each other and like two brothers, you know, because we went to the same Hebrew school. We played soccer. Then we, we had a ball, you know. Leon Basked served in the Bielski Brigade, bringing Jews to safety and acting as a sentry to protect them in their forest encampment. Alan Small was in the Kirovo Triad in Belarus. He served as a scout and participated in the destruction of German trains while fighting with his group. 
I didn't know anything about you after 65 years. You didn't know anything about me. And this is the first time I see you. This is not Frank, Frank Blackman, Romy Kahn. Frank was in Poland. Romy Kahn was in Czechoslovakia. My book is going to be published in Czechoslovakia. In Slovakia? Yeah, it's supposed to be his fault. Is that so? Yeah. And Romy has. name is Rada Die Fighter. In English. Very good. Excellent title. I like it. We it's, have. That's my book. Yeah, that's your book. Oh, that's nice. I didn't bring my book. <laughs> I was with your father. My first train would be derailed. We never knew how many Germans were killed. Nice to meet you. I was reading your book. Oh! And you were a partisan in the same place that I was. Is that so long by the Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have a convent here, but I recognize you when I, I came here. For me, you're familiar. When the name is in the name of the Shiki, the Buddha. Yeah, the Buddha, yeah. You rest in peace. Where is the coconut left beside me? I think so. Where are those? That's my Buddha. That's your brother, right? Yeah. Yes. I remember when he got married, and he was one of the youngest guys after the war that he married his wife, Libby. And then after that, we parted in 1947. They said goodbye. I came to America, and we were never in contact with each other after we uh, said goodbye. This is Marcia, my daughter. I'm the oldest daughter. You're the oldest I'm daughter? Gassi. And we went to the same school together. He was one class above me. Oh, my goodness. You know what oh I mean? And I haven't seen him in 65 years. And his brother, Yashike. Yes. yes. And, but uh, he called him Yashike. Yeah, Yashike. Yeah. Yashike. There is not too many left of us already. We have got older. But thank God, we still remember what we went through. are almost impossible to describe to you because whoever dreamed that I'll see Leon again. Every time he said something, I started remembering something else and we uh, it just caught up. How can you catch up in one hour or two hours? Somebody that you didn't see 65 years. It's, you can describe something like this. It's impossible to describe. It's just that it's the happiest moment in my life. Good evening, good evening everyone. What a wonderful night, so glad to see you here. To think there are over 55 Jewish partisans in the audience with us tonight. 55. So many stories this evening, partisans who as young men and women, seemingly ordinary people who had taken extraordinary measures, risking their lives and arming themselves and protecting their own and their Jewish heritage. Physical resistance, spiritual resistance. They are heroes among us, and their vital histories need to be shared and saved now more than ever. Tonight, we honor you. We honor your bravery and your courage. Thank you for putting the lie back into the teeth of those who said Jews did not fight back. And 
for inspiring all of us to standing up against tyranny, oppression, and discrimination. I salute, I applaud you, we all applaud you. So great can molas do get them let's in bed. This is the hymn that we sang in the forest. And all the partisans they sang it. Die immer beim finstere Nacht. Die Days are very sad, but it will come. Die ungewillte Show. It will come the right day. That will save with our food. Wir sind in do. We are here. We are proud that we are here. Weißen Palmenland bis weißen Land vom Schnee. Wir kommen an mit unser Pein, mit unser Fee. Und wo die vollen Seesen spritzt von unser Blut, sprotzen wird dort unser Gewurre, unser Mut. It is like a national anthem. It gives you a good feeling, you know that you, you have a future and things like that, you know. It came shivers in my body, you know, when we were singing that song. And we were singing this in the partisans. And, and after the war, I met my beautiful wife in Poland. We are married over 65 years. And every morning when we go to our exercise, I see my beautiful wife and I sing the song to her. So by singing the song every morning to my wife, it makes my day because we are both partisans and, and coming with happiness that we are alive. We are here. This is a song in English. This shouldn't be the last road. You should always go ahead. You should fight for your rights, for your tomorrow and for your life. All enjoyed it. The food was excellent. The drinks was fantastic. And we all had a good time. We loved each other, we understood each other, and it was really a pleasure being and to seeing them all. Yeah, this is something going to be now. Now look at this here. That's my son. That's my daughter, Laura. And they live near you. What? You live near us? Yeah, the Florida crowd. I'm sharing. The English partisan. I don't have that yet. I have to get it. I try to read everybody's book. I will find it. I will find it. And my husband wrote a book. It is uh, history, five years of the war. You remember my, my dad? Sure. What did he do during the, during the war? What I was doing? Going after the Nazis and helping people, right? Yeah. Nazis yeah. and helping people. Yeah. The helping biggest people. thing is to, to help and to save the Jewish lives. I'm Sonia and Zeus Belsky's granddaughter. So my grandfather, Zeus, led the resistance against the Nazis, what the movie Defiance is about them. So I'm the granddaughter, and that's the grandson, Matthew. Do you know this one? I know them because my grandfather saved her life. She was a fighter. We, we celebrated every year since. She was at our bar mitzvahs, uh, the weddings, everything. And, uh, you know, it's a lifelong bond. We met so many relatives today that we never knew we had. It was, it was tremendous.
tremendous. It was, we're like this. We're, they're not blood relatives, but we're all related. Our parents went through the same thing and had the same mission. Uh, hopefully my kids will learn from this, and that's why it's such a great thing that, that they know what it's all about. Oh Judith, I saw about 55 years ago. <laughs> and she, she hasn't changed? No, 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 no. I'm already planning that when we get back to Florida, forget it, forget it. I'm not going to let you go now. Are we having a party? Yes. My house, When I was in the underground, it was a happy time of my life. I felt I'm fighting not only for myself, I was fighting for the Jewish people. That's what I'm proud of it. And that's why I keep on living for it, you know, and I tell as many people I can the message what happened in World War II to the Jewish people. I'll gather my courage. I'll gather my We had so much in common and so much to talk about. I mean, we wasn't got enough time to catch up about everything. I was very emotional, it was very hard for me, but I loved every second of it. We all talked to each other and we got the second generation and we got all so close together like it's one family. The future generation should know one thing. Remember your history. Stand up for what is right and never give up. <laughs>